Brown skin citizens of estos estados jodidos. You know who you are. Keep your hands and languages where we can see them and state your nationality loudly, please, so that we all can hear it. Can you spell where your parents are from using only American letters? Can you regurgitate your original birth certificate with the raised seal? Brown skinned citizens of estos estados jodidos, if you cannot do this, then please tell us what was your mother's maiden name before the colonizers baptized her. Do you know the current location of any of the remains of your ancestors that we beheaded, specifically the heads? Have you ever left flowers or explosives anywhere along the border where a brown man or woman was lynched? How many family members do you have in your pocket right now? Do you have anything in your blood that you would like to declare? Brown skinned citizens of estos estados jodidos, are you able to provide us with any of your family members, specifically children? as collateral in case you decide to leave the state. Can you lay your trauma on the table, please, and keep it separate from any tear that your familia may have packed for you? Were any of your bags packed by any ghosts that are not related to you? Brown-skinned citizens of estos estados jodidos, are you a monolinguist or a bilinguist? If you're a monolinguist, keep your tongue where we can see it. If you're a bilinguist, answer the following questions clearly. Have you ever used your second language in an act of violence? Have you ever used your second language to help someone understand something that we did not want them to understand? Does speaking English hurt when you swallow? Do you consider Spanish a colonized tongue even on Sundays? Please provide an address for two locations within the borders of these disunited states where you have lived and where the majority of the swear words were spoken in English. Would you consider shortening or even changing your history so that it's easier for Americans to pronounce it? Brown-skinned citizens of estos estados jodidos, have you ever driven anywhere with the bones of a conquistador in your trunk? You have. Are you able to provide us with a photo of one of your ancestors in the process of committing a foreign act? Do you dream in English more than three times a week? Do you have any other languages stashed under your tongue? Does your mispronouncing of English words follow immediate and sincere shame? Have you ever worked as a stereotype before? Brown-skinned citizens of estos estados jodidos, are there any bones out there not related to you that will speak up on your behalf? Can you provide us with receipts for every time that you have been called wetback, spick, beaner, illegal? Do you see these comments more as insults or more as acts of patriotism? Have you ever been vaccinated in case someone bleeds on you in a foreign language. Can you translate the lines of the national anthem? Can you avoid reading in between the lines of the Pledge of Allegiance? Are you able to sincerely cry at some point on the 4th of July? Brown-skinned citizens of estos estados jodidos, how long did it take your father or mother to walk here? Do you know if they smoked any do you know if they smoked any milagros while they walked? Do you know if they brought any other people with them? Do you need an interpreter for anything that I have just said? Would you like to talk to someone who you cannot relate at all to about any of these questions? And finally, brown-skinned citizens of estos estados jodidos, let me ask you 
Would you consider your survival here an act of aggression against the safety of this disunited state's borders? Or put another way, is the fact that you and your brown culture not dead yet despite everything that we have done to you so far, something that should concern us? Keep your language in your hands where we can see them and wait here while we evaluate your answers. So um, a lot of times as a Chicanx uh, person, uh, my memorias, our memorias, our history is hidden from us. Uh, you know, like uh, when you think about a lot of the descriptions of the, well, they call it, the, we, call, we call it the European invasion. Some people call it the conquest. Uh, when you think about that, a lot of the descriptions are from the people who conquered us, right? It's like, a, so we're getting this history, but it's still colonized history. So a lot of times, uh, what we do is, is we look inside ourselves for our history, and it's there. Uh, I had a Lakota brother on mushrooms. Uh, I was the one on mushrooms, not him. But uh, one time he described it to me, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but he described it as a medicine of the mole, you know, which basically means no matter how deep your cultura is in the ground, it still comes up, you know, when you, we look inside ourselves. So this is what I find coming up when I think about Tenochtitlan, which, if any of you don't know, is the Mexica city that the Aztecas uh, built in the middle of a lake that the conquistadors came and dot-commed and did their thing to, you know. So uh, this is called Tenochtitlan and Tecnicolor. Tenochtitlan in Tecnicolor. Mexica City seen with my own culturas ojos. Inside of us, you still illuminate under this quinto sol. Inside of us, you still shimmer with la luz de la luna across time and space, across an increíble distancia. Over 500 years later, you are still inside each of us, remembered by being passed along through our ancestors' memorias and dream recollections and not by the lying, guilty history written on crumbling papel by the colonizers. Tenochtitlan in Tecnicolor, shimmers of azul y rojo on your walls, dream tones. God colors, plumas of copal rising all the way to outer space and back down deep into the fifth direction. Inside of us, you still exist, unconquered, majestic. We remember you before the crucified billboards, before the baptisms and beheadings, before the Franciscan friars and their secret psychedelical midnight mass that they would never let the Mashika attend. We remember you, and we wander through you, holding giant bouquets of amarillo y naranjada colored flores and we hold them up to give the Sagrado Espiritus a place to rest in the past, present, and future. Tenochtitlan in Tecnicolor. You were here before the white devils appeared and started immediately to mispronounce our reality, started calling themselves angels, gods saviors, bringers of culture. We knew what we were saying cuando we called them devils. We said devils and we meant it. Tenochtitlan in Tecnicolor. Before the comets flew across el cielo, weeping fuego for you. Before Lake Texcoco bubbled and boiled warnings. Before the ash gray heron with the mirror on its head was caught and reflected what was to come, warning us that you, beloved 
city was going to be evicted from your own self. Foundation gone. 30 days notice to vacate this reality. An eviction notice from a Catholic European God, an absentee landlord of the highest order, Tenochtitlan in Technicolor. Even though we are baptized not to, we still remember you. We still remember your temples to Huitzilopochtli. We can remember looking upon Kotlakyu before she was Tonatzin, before she was Mary, before she was who she really was, Tenochtitlan in Technicolor. We will always remember you before the diseases that killed us quicker than any angry, crucified God or mispronounced prophecy ever would. We will always mourn and yearn to see you sacred city. The pain we cause today is from wounds that we received that bled on your stones. Wounds that reverberate into the past, present, and future. Nowadays, we create you every day. We do this because we have to. We feel your colores with our eyes closed. We see your pyramids and temples rise up out from inside of us. Your building's silhouette splash onto our view of 24th Street. It shapes today's quinto sol horoscopes of what will become of us. Tenochtitlan in Technicolor, aquí in occupied Aslan. On certain days, I have woken from mis sueños, looked out the window, and there you were just across the water. But then just like that, you disappear. And I find myself looking at the skyline of San Francisco. The Polaroid pictures that the conquistadors took block the view. The genocidal greeting cards and colonized holiday decorations block the view. White man's electricity blocks the view. The knock-knock jokes that the missionaries first told us block the view. They believed, they actually believed that they could hide their lust for gold and call it God-approved progress. And that a few drops of well-placed holy water would be all that it would take to forget about you. Beautiful city. But no matter how much they have spun us around, we will always find and create you. You were a geographic location, but you're also a Mexica state of mind. A metropolis that housed our gods, our truths, our science. How could we ever forget that? How could we forget that your ruins, your ruins were not even respectfully left to crumble, but instead they were left above ground like the violated dead to be used for the beginnings of New Spain. And that name still brings pain and terremotos to el monstruo, as they refer to you today. El monstruo. You rumble. You shudder in your new concrete form. You still ache to be what you were, what you are inside of us, and what we remember you to be. Your stones are in our corazones forever. Tenochtitlan en Technicolor. Gracias.